In 1788, Cook landed. By 1789, a smallpox epidemic broke out. Now, the British colonists were fine because they'd been exposed to this disease in infancy and a lot of other diseases, so they were pretty resistant at this point. But the First Nations people were not fine. Up to 70% of First Nations people were killed rapidly by smallpox. Smallpox was followed by influenza, measles, tuberculosis, and sexually transmitted diseases. All of which, again, the British colonists were fine with because they'd been exposed earlier, but the Aboriginals were not, and it caused widespread death. Now, maybe you think this is where the killing times stopped, but actually this isn't. This is where they started. Because while bringing diseases might have been inadvertent, massacres, legal massacres, were not. Starting in 1794, mass killings were carried out on men, women, and children of our First Nations people. And they didn't stop until 1926 without repercussions. There was one instance of mass killing where repercussions were actually felt by British colonists out of that entire more than a hundred year period of mass killings. And while you think maybe the massacres got less lethal over time, they didn't. They got more lethal over time, and eventually there was only casualties from the First Nations people and none from the perpetrators. And the First Nations people weren't just blatantly murdered with guns. They were handed poisoned flour to kill entire families. And these massacres of an entire First Nations people, of the oldest living people on this earth, still cause harm today, along with many of the other things we did as colonists on this country. We still live in a cult of forgetfulness and a conspiracy of silence. And that harm will not begin to be mended until we begin to acknowledge those acts and start to make amends. And while we have started that, we have a long way to go.